Boa noite, pessoal. Hoje nós vamos conversar com o Rory Bottom, foi tecladista da banda Faith No More. Agora está com um projeto novo chamado Man on Man. Nosso editor, Vinícius de Amada, está online junto com a gente. Acho que agora foi. Vamos ver. Yay! Yay! Good evening! How are you guys? Good. What time is it? Where are you exactly? Which city? We're in California. I don't have Hold on. Hi. Hello. There we go. Better. Hi. Good. How are We're you? We're in uh, California. We're uh, in a small beach town. It's called Oxnard. It's like 50 miles north of Los Angeles. All right. And it's um, we're staying at a house that uh, my mom has. We came out here when the coronavirus hit. So we've been staying here pretty much uh, for the past couple months. All right. Uh, when you give me the answer, I'll translate it really quick for Portuguese. Uh, okay. In a we'll try to keep right. our answers short, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> então eu perguntei para eles de onde eles estão falando. Eles estão falando de uma pequena cidade, 50 milhas ao norte da, de Los Angeles, chamada Oxnard. E eles foram para lá uh, em função do coronavírus e lá estão. Né? Uh, well, uh, for starters, uh, I would like to introduce you guys, of course. So I'm talking to, I'm talking to Rody Bodum. I would, I would like to know how, how, how do I say the pronunciation of your surname? That was something I was uh, thinking. How do I say your surname? Uh, my surname is Bottom. It's like Ah. Bottom. Yeah. yeah. The pronunciation is Bottom. All right. That's right. All right. And this Rody is Joey. Bottom. And Joey's last name is Joey Holman. 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 Uh, yes. All right. All right. All right. So, Rody, you were the keyboardist of Fate No More. Uh, yep, I you still am. To another... You still, you still are. Yeah. And uh, you're now in a new project called uh, Man on Man, which is a duo you're doing with your uh, boyfriend, right? Correct. Right. Nice. Então, eu tô... conversei com ele aqui agora rapidinho e ele me, me contar aqui, dizendo para gente que uh, tá num projeto novo uh, com o, o namorado chamado Man on Man. Ele vai contar um pouquinho aqui para gente. Uh, the first question I would like to ask you is uh, how you guys are holding up everything that's going on uh, nowadays in, uh, in America. I think that's something that we can start. It's a lot of things we're seeing in, here in the uh, television. And what's your perspective on, on what's happening? Um, you know, I think we are like most people who are here. We're inspired. We're scared. We're invigorated. We're hopeful. Um, We celebrate uh, the fact that all four police officers are in jail who uh, had a hand in killing George Floyd. We celebrate that. We've got a long, long way to go, but uh, we believe firmly that black lives matter, black voices matter, and uh, we are looking at what's happening in our country um, and we, we are inspired and we think that we're going in the right direction. And uh, yeah, I think I think mostly we are, I think we're hopeful and we're invigorated. I think it would be silly to say that we weren't scared and we weren't, um, you know, a little bit. Yeah, I guess I, I think fear is on, on everybody's mind right now. Um, but I think more than anything, we're invigorated. Nice. Então, a primeira pergunta que eu fiz para eles foi para começar a nossa conversa. Como é que está o clima? Como é que está... Como é que eles estão se sentindo? Como é que são as perspectivas em relação a tudo que está acontecendo nos Estados Unidos, em relação ao que aconteceu com o George Floyd e até em relação à pandemia? E eles disseram que eles estão otimistas e eles estão com uma sensação de... Uh, uma perspectiva de se revigorar diante de tudo isso. Uh, novas coisas acontecerão e eles estão otimistas de que uh, a conclusão dos fatos Uh, será muito positiva e que já tem muitos uh, policiais uh, e pessoas envolvidas nessa história que já estão sendo uh, sofrendo as devidas uh, consequências disso, né? Eles fizeram questão de enfatizar uh, o hashtag Black Lives Matter uh, que nós aqui do Gay Blog endossamos uh, uh, absolutamente, né? Uh, so, regarding uh, Brazil, if, if you've been to Brazil in 2011, right? So, since we're talking to Brazil fans, 
what would be your uh, memory of Brazil, of the Brazil crowd, of uh, something that your memory remembers you of Brazil and of our country? Um, I went there for the first time in the 90s to Rio uh, with my band Fate No More, and we played uh, a handful of shows. We went down there primarily to play uh, Rock in Rio, and uh, it was the biggest stadium in the world in Rio. You know that stadium? Yep. And it was televised live, and we'd never been to Brazil before. So it was uh, crazy because we played that show and I think we played before Guns N' Roses. So a lot of people were watching on TV and like overnight uh, we became like famous in Brazil just because so many people were watching TV. And uh, it was a real special time. And also on that trip, I got to meet Prince. Oh, all right. Uh, ele disse que vieram para o Brasil em 1990 no Rock in Rio e que foi uma experiência absolutamente incrível, porque era um lugar gigantesco, com milhões de pessoas, e eles tiveram a oportunidade de tocar antes, uh, acho que foi antes que ele disse, antes do Guns, e estava sendo televisionado, e a sensação dele é que da noite para o dia as pessoas passaram a adorar eles, e, 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 e curtir a banda, e conhecer eles, e que isso foi... Uh, muito maravilhoso. Inclusive, ele acabou de contar que conheceu o Prince uh, nessa ocasião. E como foi o Prince? Ele é tão maravilhoso como nós pensamos que ele é? Eu vi um ele em um club. E eu fui ao the club e havia uma. Como você diz? Uma roupa de velvet. Você sabe o que isso significa? Ele estava em uma VIP area em um club. Ok, right, ok, right, ok. Right, e yeah. so I saw him sitting, e eu sou um grande fã. And there was a big man, like, in a chair outside of the rope. And I went up to him and I said, can I speak with Prince? And the man looked at me. I told him I was in a band. We played Rock and Rio. And can I, I just wanted to say hi to Prince. So he went over to Prince and goes like, and Prince looked at me. And then he looked at the guy and he went. So they moved <laughs> the rope and I got to go in and I spoke to him. The first thing I noticed is he smelled like lavender, like a beautiful smell. And he had a very, really quiet, pretty, girly voice. Nice. And he like batted his eyelashes. And I swear he was flirting with me. <laughs> então, eu perguntei para ele, o Prince era tão incrível quanto a gente, enfim acha que ele é, acompanhou a carreira dele, o que, que você me diz dessa história? Ele acabou de me contar que eles foram à noite numa festa e que uh, tinha uma área VIP e que ele falou com segurança uh, e, e falou, é, eu gostaria, pediu para o segurança, eu gostaria de dar uma palavrinha com o Prince, será que poderia conhecer o Prince? E que o segurança foi lá, falou no ouvido do Prince, que o Prince olhou ele meio que de cima a baixo e só fez assim com a cabeça, do tipo, esse é dos meus, me parece, né? E que uh, ele entrou, conversou com o Prince, que o Prince tinha um perfume de lavanda maravilhoso e era uma pessoa muito querida uh, e bateram papo e, e, e fizeram uma, uma boa conexão naquele momento e ele adorou conhecer o Prince. Né? Um, did you get to know any uh, Brazilian singer, band or song that I mean, in, in your life that you think that you like? Yeah, I love Tim Maia a whole lot. He's my favorite. Uh, right. I also love Juja quite a bit. All right. What do you like about... Uh, did, did you... Not, wait, just a second. Signal. Just a second. Can you see me? All right. Because for me, the signal was a, real, a, real, a little bit bad here. All right. Perguntei para ele de que artistas que ele gostava. Ele falou que gostava do Tim Maia. Um, all right. What's your name? My name is Joaquim. 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 Hey, Joaquim. Yes. yes. Joaquim where is are you Aram now? Yeah, where are I'm you? I'm in Sao Paulo. Cool. All right. 
I like your glasses. Uh, thank you. <laughs> They're nice. I thank like round much. glasses. Yeah, I like round glasses too. A lot of people are doing very big, thick ones still. And I like, I love a, a nice wire frame. It looks very nice. I'm trying to look a little bit more smart, I think. <laughs> Yeah. É, ele disse que me perguntou meu nome, é, da onde eu era, e, e elogiou meus óculos, falou que os óculos eram bonitinhos. Score. Uh, Score. All right. Uh, tell us a little bit about Man on Man. I think everybody's very curious about that. Man on Man. Glad you asked. Um, man on Man is a celebration of our love. Uh, we started it uh, in the middle of uh, the lockdown, the quarantine that everybody around the world is a part of. Um, and it was really kind of born out of a long drive we did across the country. New York is very far Northeast in America. And we went to Southern California. So we drove all the way across the country And we knew as artists that our place in all of this was just to keep creating. And so we got a few really simple pieces of, of music gear and we decided to start there simply and we started making it. All right. I know então, you have to translate that, so I'll keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Então eu perguntei para eles, uh, fala um pouquinho do projeto Man on Man e ele começa dizendo que é Uh, um projeto feito de amor, né? Uh, começou a dar todas essas, essas questões de isolamento e de quarentena, então eles resolveram, uh, tiveram que se isolar e, bom, o projeto fala de como é importante manter uh, alguma coisa acesa, a criatividade acesa, mesmo diante de momentos difíceis. Então eles uh, juntaram o que ele está chamando de alguns gears, né, alguns equipamentos. Né, vou perguntar para ele em seguida como é que foi esse processo. Uh, e começaram a experimentar e o projeto foi surgindo. Uh, when you say that you gathered up some gears, can you be more specific? You mean like with instruments and how, how did you cope with the idea that you wouldn't have a proper uh, studio or something like that? We kept it super simple, but uh, we recorded and wrote everything that we've created so far in this house, right upstairs from where we are right now. It's right. my mom's house and upstairs there's a piano that I grew up playing. So we knew on the way out here, we had that. We had the piano. We also had Joey's guitar, but all we did was order like a keyboard thing to help us and a microphone to sing in. And we had that sent to this house. So when we got here, we had that and we set it up and we just started writing songs. So yeah, I mean, yeah, we only had an upright piano, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and a microphone. That's literally it. Yeah. Piano, guitar, and keyboard. Yep. All right. Então eu perguntei para eles como é que foi o processo, né, de criação, tendo em vista que eles estavam dentro de casa, não estavam num estúdio, né, propriamente dito. E eles falaram que começaram a escrever nessa casa onde eles estão agora, que é a casa da mãe do do Rory. E, basicamente, o, pro, o projeto todo é feito com piano, uh, guitarra, o teclado, o microfone e a, e a voz deles, né? I think, uh, too, like, just to answer your other question, it, it, it is not ideal to be looking at a laptop, a little, you know, a little laptop trying to make music, but I think, if anything, it, I hope that people are encouraged that you don't have to have this big professional environment you know, to invite you to make really good music or really good art that you love, you just start with what you have and, and make the most of it. Ele quis completar a resposta dizendo que é muito importante nesse momento que mesmo que você esteja numa situação uh, uh, desfavorável, né, com certa precariedade, né, e que você não tenha os, os instrumentos adequados para fazer alguma coisa, que você deve ser criativo, né? Ele está tentando incentivar os artistas e as pessoas que têm algo a dizer, né? Uh, com o que elas puderem, com o que elas tiverem. E eu acho que quando ele começa dizendo que é, é, é fruto do amor, né? Acho que fica interessante pensar que tem um, um, uma relação entre as duas coisas, né? É... What is the biggest challenge you faced for uh, the for Daddy? Uh, 
did you have to learn techniques or of an instrument or did you need to buy recording equipment? Did, did, did they have a specific uh, uh, difficulty? It wasn't a difficulty, but we'd never written music before together. So that was something new and challenging. All right. Perguntei para ele se tinha, teve alguma dificuldade específica com a música dele. Eles falaram que não, mas foi a primeira vez que eles escreveram músicas juntos. Então, que isso foi uh, interessante. Uh, when you say that um, one of the ideas is to encourage people, uh, could, you be, uh, could you talk a little bit more about that uh, regarding what we're living now as an artist and has, ha having something to communicate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now more than ever, we need artists to communicate what they see, what they hear, and what they believe. Artists have always been the ones who communicate really honest truth, and uh, and we need that more than ever right now. Um, and I think uh, whatever challenges you have, there's no right time to make hard art, difficult art, you know? If difficult art is always going to be difficult to make, whether you have the best conditions or the worst conditions, you just need to start with what you know, what you feel, what you believe. And I would say right now we need it more than ever. There's going to be a lot of people who say there's too many bands or there's too many filmmakers or there's too many writers or there's too many bloggers, whatever. But the truth is, is we need everybody more than ever to speak up um, and speak to the truth that they're seeing every day. All right. Perguntei para eles, é, pedi para ele, ele aprofundar um pouquinho é, a questão dessa uh, vontade de encorajar isso nas pessoas e ele disse que agora, mais do que nunca, é a hora dos artistas uh, se juntarem e pensarem a fazer coisas e não deixar a produtividade cair, quer dizer, absolutamente tudo na opinião dele que os artistas possam estar sentindo, vendo, ouvindo é algo que pode se transformar em arte. Ele acrescenta, inclusive, que tem uma turma meio estranha, meio chata, que adora ficar dizendo que tem um excesso de artistas, um excesso de blogueiros, um excesso de, de, de músicos, e, enfim, e que isso ele acha isso uma bobagem. Ele acha que quanto mais pessoas estiverem disponíveis e a fim de falar sobre... Uh, sensações, sentimentos, o que está acontecendo com o mundo, isso é importante, principalmente no momento que a gente está vivendo aqui agora. All right. It seems that uh, there was an unusual debut, uh, debut on YouTube for the first clip. What happened? Did, did YouTube send a message saying that the content was not allowed or that it would be not monetized? Yeah, we created that video and we, we, we shot it all ourselves and we edited it all ourselves and we put it up on YouTube and it got a lot of attention really fast. Like all of a sudden, like in like three or four days, three days, there were like 28,000 views, which was crazy. We didn't expect anything like that. And then we got a notice from YouTube saying that, uh, It was being taken down off of their platform because we had violated uh, their codes of sexuality and nudity and they just took it down and that was it. So it was off their site for, you know, maybe a week or a something week. almost. Então eu perguntei para eles que a gente ouviu falar que deu um pequeno problema, que eles postaram o um vídeo uh, e que depois o vídeo foi uh, derrubado do YouTube. Ele disse que uh, foi muito rápido o, a apreciação do vídeo, 28 mil likes muito rapidamente, e que o YouTube acusou de ser linguagem própria, tocar em assuntos de sexo, enfim, que, e que derrubou isso. Uh, regarding uh, some of the things that you talk about in the clip, uh, and when we talk about uh, the LGBTQA plus community and... Uh, Uh, the many many faces né, of who of 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 this community. Um, what would you say is the most one of the one of the most important things that you're trying to communicate through this uh, song? You know, the sort of the project was mostly it was an exercise in isolation, 
And it's interesting to us, I think, because the whole world is going through this. Like right now, the racial inequality and the racial injustice that America's feeling right now remains at this point an American sort of social problem that's happening, that we're dealing with right now. But the coronavirus, it struck us as this global epidemic that was so interesting that everyone in the world was going through it. So the exercise of us making music together and sort of writing love songs together and celebrating our relationship uh, in that sort of isolation was something we felt that was relatable to everyone that was going through the epidemic. Uh, through that, we just wanted to really just share a bunch of love songs, but it kind of transcends that and is more of a sort of a, a, a hello to like, people who don't necessarily fit in the categories of gay representation that are portrayed in, say, the media. Like, we are clearly not pretty gay boys that, you know, uh, people want to spend time, like... Well, let me interrupt you. We are, he is very pretty. I mean, look... I, at yeah, face. that's He's what I was going to say. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, typically, we wanted to yeah, just push I, I, some I sort of... Uh, boundaries as far as representation went in who we are and uh, our place in the world. All right. Let me just, uh, when you, when, I, when in the beginning of your answer, uh, I'll translate it in, in the, when I get the next answer. Uh, you talk about how important was the, the, the proposition of talking about the quarantine and the love theme in quarantine. What exactly are you talking about? That the quarantine shouldn't um, depress us, that the quarantine should be transformed and something must be done within the quarantine. Is that what you're talking about? That's an interesting point. I kind of think uh, more it was about like uh, the confines of the quarantine uh, sort of put things in focus that weren't necessarily as in sharp of a focus. Like our relationship in quarantine became very intense. Mm. And uh we were forced to sort of look at it and deal with it in really intense right. terms. And right. it's forced us to sort of like uh, see what's important in the world. All right. Então eu perguntei para eles, uh, dentre muitos uh, assuntos e temas que eles abordam né, no clipe, uh, no projeto Man on Man, um, essa questão da quarentena a qual ele se refere. Então ele diz que um dos principais motivos de fazer isso foi que ele percebeu que a pandemia tomou conta da vida de todo mundo, transformou a vida de todo mundo e como é que isso fez com que a gente ficasse dentro de casa uh, repensando uma série de que questões, uma série de valores e no final uh, aprender a valorizar certas coisas que a gente não valorizaria tanto. No caso deles, é, o que eles estão contando é que eles perceberam que é, tinham um amor, tinham um relacionamento, é, e isso fez eles perceberem quão valioso isso é e, 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 e passar a olhar e perceber esse relacionamento é, confinados dentro da quarentena é, em relação a, a, ao, ao próprio sentimento. Em seguida, ele vai dizer, ele até faz uma brincadeira, é, que ele vai esbarrar num assunto uh, que ele acha bastante importante quando a gente vai falar de questões uh, LGBTQI a mais, que é que ele ele fez uma brincadeira, ele falou eu não sou exatamente um padrão de estética, não sou bonitinho, sarado, etc. e tal, e eu acho que tem uma mídia uh, que e uma cultura, né, que coloca esse tipo de pessoa com essas características em evidência. Então, que ele quis fazer uma, uma música, uma história, uma arte, né, um projeto uh, que pudesse dar Bom, visibilidade é. para quem não é necessariamente uh, bonito ou gostoso ou qualquer coisa do tipo. Eu mesmo prontamente disse para ele que eu discordava. É, e aí ele riu e o, e o namorado também imediatamente disse ah, eu discordo disso, acho você bem bonito. Né? Um... We're trying our best to answer short, short, short answers, but it's hard. You're asking good yeah, no. questions. No, no problem. It's perfect. Do you understand any of, of, what, of what I'm saying? We understood everything. <laughs> Just kidding. Stupid question. <laughs> I would love to learn um, 
Portuguese. Portuguese. I mean, for it's I understand some words, you know, but not really any of them. Do you know how love is in Portuguese? Love. Mm. Amo. 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 Yeah. Amor. Yes, exactly. Te amo. What's that? Yeah. Uh, that's your Maya song. You know? Te amo você. Que linda. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. É, ele disse que ele estava tentando fazer um esforço danado uh, para entender o que eu estava falando. Ah, desculpa. Primeiro ele falou que ele estava tentando dar respostas rápidas. Uh, se ele não estava atrapalhando, eu falei, claro que não, que as respostas estavam... Uh, muito legais, eu perguntei para ele se ele sabia como é que era amor em português e o Roddy uh, sabia a resposta. Um, can the audience uh, expect a new song very soon? Do you imagine this project as an album with a fine number of tracks? We, yeah, we'll have another song up, I mean, I guess relatively soon. There's a lot going on, I think, just in america that it feels a little bit weird to put out um stuff there's so much to put toward um you know highlighting the racial injustice in america so we'll we'll kind of it's not a right time yet um but we will put out something um we have a lot of songs actually um that we will definitely put into an album um when the time is right um and you know we have we have a lot of songs actually um and we we're not going to define how many songs go on the record because again i mean we're still sort of as best as we can we're still quarantining you know like we're still trying to be socially responsible in those ways so you know we'll keep making music and um but yeah who knows how many songs will be on the album but there will be an album and there will be a lot more singles to come as well all right então eu perguntei para eles se eles pretendiam fazer outras músicas, se tinha, uh, é, se tem alguma música em breve para sair, como é que é a questão do projeto em, em relação a ser um álbum. Uh, e eles disseram que eles não têm exatamente uma opinião formada sobre isso, que claramente eles vão fazer mais músicas, mas eles estão muito sensíveis ao que está acontecendo no mundo e eles acreditam que esse é um momento que requer um olhar sobre o que acontece para que você projete né, uh, uh, e, e distribua e, 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 e publique músicas né, uh, que talvez se, relacionam, uh, se relacionem com uh, o que está acontecendo no mundo. Eles estão, eles estão com essa preocupação, eles acham que sensibilidade nesse momento da parte de todo mundo é uma coisa muito importante. Um, The format of music consumption has changed. Uh, I'll say. And after, I mean, Corona with, uh, I mean, with a problem with the uh, agglomerations and people, how do you think this will, uh, I, don't, I know that you don't have a crystal ball, but how do you think that things will, you know, wrap up at the end? I don't know, it's hard to say. It's, um... Yeah, it's hard to look into the future. That's what scares me so much is, uh, for me, I love Joey Chew. We love going to live shows. Like, I live in New York City because I love theater. I love the opera. I love to see live shows. And I love to do anything that involves a lot of people all together, like, on top of each other. It's my favorite place to be. So it's really horrifying to think that that's not available right now. I think, really... Um, Yeah, it's not clear how it's going to change. I know it's sort of a cliche, but I feel like uh, the best thing to hope for at this point is a vaccine. Perguntei para ele como é que eles achavam essa questão da, da pandemia e como é que vai ser o futuro uh, da música, principalmente no que diz respeito a shows e tudo mais. Ele, com um tom um pouco mais abatido, diz que ele está com muito medo uh, e ele dá uma opinião, uh, uma perspectiva bastante particular de que ele adora, por exemplo, uma cidade como Nova York, que tem óperas, shows, uh, concertos, e que, uh, por enquanto, a coisa está muito ruim 
e sem perspectiva, mas que ele está torcendo para que uh, a vacina apareça o mais cedo possível. Né? Um, regarding still songs, uh, what other themes do you think, apart from the, uh, the love theme and uh, the quarantine, you think you're going to be approaching in other songs or something like that? I think we're just being honest with the process. I mean, it started out, I think, naturally, Roddy and I were writing about our experience with dealing with the, the, the devastation of COVID and the worldwide response of just this tension and fear. And we were very literal with it, with our experience with it. And then I think once we were about a month in, we started observing how other parts of our life, our feelings about other things that have happened to us in the past, um, our belief systems, those things still exist. So now how do those things exist with COVID? How do those things interact with how we feel uh, while we're being in isolation? Um, and so the content then shifted to not just literal here, we're in quarantine together, but it's translated into um, how we were dealing with things uh, that we experienced before this ever even happened. Um, so yeah, it, it got, it started out literal and then it kind of ended up being a kind of a, not a free for all necessarily, but we started uh, broadening the subject matter lyrically. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 it does. Okay. Uh, perguntei para eles uh, um pouquinho mais sobre os, as novas músicas que virão e principalmente os temas né, que eles pretendem abordar. E, bom, ele disse que a coisa está bastante orgânica. Uh, eles estão, como na resposta anterior, muito sensíveis ao que está acontecendo no mundo. É, e ele vai dizer que, no primeiro momento, a, essa devastação que aconteceu no mundo foi talvez uh, o, a, o, fio, o primeiro fio condutor para chegar em algumas um, inspirações artísticas, é, mas que depois, num segundo momento, esse espectro alargou, uh, porque, como eles já disseram um pouquinho na outra resposta também, quer dizer, a vida mudou e alguns princípios tiveram que mudar também. Não só princípios, talvez, de relacionamento, como eles disseram entre eles, mas da relação com a vida, com a natureza, né, com o dinheiro, uh, com a carreira. Então, que eles estão extremamente é, abertos e suscetíveis a essas interferências que são completamente imprevisíveis uh, nesse cenário atípico que a gente está tá vivendo. Um, I noticed that the, 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 the name Man on Man is with the capital letters. Is that a reason specific for that? We're just very big people. <risos> all right, all right. Perguntei para ele se tinha uma razão para o Man on Man estar tá sempre em letra maiúscula. E ele disse é, que simplesmente porque eles se acham pessoas grandes. <risos> é, do you consider that Man on Man as a gay empowerment uh, project? That's what we're aiming for, yeah, for sure. I think we're, I think we're looking to make music that we like. We're, we're looking to show images of ourselves that we like. Um, Roddy said a couple of times before, you know, there's, there's a very wild, you know, as, as much as LGBTQIA plus people are not accepted, there is an appetite for a very monolithic type of gay person that we're kind of sick and tired of seeing. They, they have a place at the table. They should be, you know, they should be, uh, you know, in the spotlight. But I think with us, it's like there's so many other kinds of people under the rainbow. And so it's time to, to show them all. Um, and that includes different styles of, of music and, and body types and age and the whole thing. We want to, we want to broaden the terms for what is acceptable um, in the gay and queer communities in the, in, in, in the world. Legal. Perguntei especificamente se eles acham que o projeto é um projeto de empoderamento 
uh, da comunidade LGBTQIA+, e eles disseram que, com certeza, ele usa a expressão monolytical, que, de, querendo se referir a um projeto, a uma ideia de homem uh, de, 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 de gay, uh, que, que, que esbarra em muitos, muitas construções uh, que não representam absolutamente todas as pessoas. Então, a ideia do projeto é conseguir abrir e expandir esse espectro para outras pessoas que não fazem parte dessa uh, cultura uh, opressora de beleza e corpos, né? uh, possam ter visibilidade. A ideia é que ele possa fazer isso através da música, uh, uh, da expressão corporal uh, e através, obviamente, dos temas que ele está trazendo. Né? É... In your Rolling Stone inter interview, you, you used, uh, I got a very interesting phrase that you said, we're asking for an equitable playing field. I think that was a very important uh, uh, remark that you made. Mm -hmm. uh, would you care to um, elucidate a little bit for us? Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at what, again, it goes back to the answer before, what people are used to seeing on the TV or on their telephone is really when you break it down, part of the patriarchy. If you're a straight couple having sex or being sexual or showing skin, that's okay. If you're two women kissing or being sexual, that's okay. But as soon as it's two men doing the exact same thing that is acceptable, it then becomes not okay. And it's not just about being gay. I mean, there's tons and tons of evidence that black and brown people who have millions of views on their YouTube channels are not being monetized for that traffic. So we're in a straight white man's world in the digital era. And we're saying like, it's not fair. It's not fair to, um, to take our video down, to take other people's videos down, to not pay them what they're worth. We never, we never started YouTube to get paid for it. And honestly, our problems aren't that big. I mean, it got taken down and it got put back up. Boohoo, whatever, it's not a big deal. But I think like gay rights is, is asking for, we're asking for the same rights as everybody else. And really the same kind of spirit going into our art should be appreciated in the same way. Um, that was such a long answer. I'm so sorry. Good luck. No, no problem. No problem. É, eu perguntei para eles, porque na entrevista do que eles deram para Rolling Stone, ele usa em inglês a frase We're asking for an equitable playing field, que em português seria um campo uh, de uh, trabalho, um campo de, de produção, de, de, de participação uh, no meio uh, virtual e artístico de equidade. Né? E eu pedi para ele comentar em relação a isso. Uh, e o que ele está dizendo, ele dá exemplos de que ele sabe que tem páginas uh, de pessoas negras, uh, de pessoas da comunidade LGBT, que simplesmente não são monetizadas. Ele se refere a um universo controlado por homens brancos e heterossexuais uh, e que isso conduz absolutamente uh, o que fica no ar, o que não fica, o que é considerado bom, o que não é. É, e que eles estão tentando, uh, nesse projeto especificamente, assim como milhares de pessoas que já discutem esse assunto, né, uh, trazer mais força para essa discussão. Né? Quer dizer, uh, trazer a, a possibilidade da visibilidade para todas as pessoas e não só para aquela expressão que ele se referiu da última resposta, esse monolito homem branco hétero. Uh, Let me see. All right. Can I ask one question uh, a little bit, a little back, back to the past? Uh, it seems that a little bit in the 1990s, Rodi, uh, there is this uh, happening, I think, that when you came out and... Uh, That would be really hard. I mean, I can imagine in the 1990s to do that. And would you care to comment a little bit on, on that experience and how this can be something very important for people uh, who are artists and not artists to, to think about? 
Uh, yeah, when I came out as a gay man in the 90s, it was a very challenging time. Uh, my band was on tour with like Guns N' Roses at the time. And they are not, the, they weren't, didn't strike me as the most gay friendly sort of operation. And it was sort of like witnessing that and being on tour with that and just having a sort of close up perspective on the more straight kind of like uh, rock world and being exposed to it and knowing that I was part of it uh, just made me want to speak out. And uh, I remember at the time, a lot of people had people in my circle, like not necessarily band members or stuff, but people were uh, kind of trying to get me to, to not do that. And, and I just kind of followed my heart and sort of, the end of the day it was just about sort of honesty and just sort of like um sharing part of who i was and uh i gotta say once that i made that decision and made that declaration i never ever had any criticism or any backlash for it and it just to me is a sort of testament that following your heart and doing sort of what is close to you and sharing it is always sort of uh, a good direction to go. É, perguntei para ele, uh, pedi licença para fazer uma pergunta sobre o passado e falei, pra, perguntei para ele como é que foi a experiência de nos anos 90 uh, sair do armário, se assumir, né? Uh, e, e como é que foi isso naquela época e como é que ele se sentiu? Uh, e ele conta que no primeiro momento, ele ele pensava muito nisso e tinha até uma certa dificuldade em pensar de fato em executar isso. De uma maneira muito educada, muito sutil, muito delicada, ele conta que uh, muitas das tours que ele fazia era com o e que esse ambiente de rock, especificamente, não era o mais convidativo para isso. Uh, não que ele tivesse sofrido algum tipo de ameaça ou qualquer coisa do tipo, mas que e, e não era um cenário favorável. Mesmo assim, quando eu pergunto para ele por que ele fez, né, se o cenário era favorável, ele acha que como pessoa e artista se tratava de pura e simplesmente uma questão de honestidade, né? uma questão de entrar em contato com quem você é e ser honesto em relação a isso, que ele acredita que isso é uma coisa, um gesto, é um movimento muito importante ele não usa essa palavra, mas a, a impressão que eu tive que é uma espécie de autoconhecimento né? e de poder uh, se vincular às pessoas, uh, entendendo quem você é e que isso é uma coisa que ele não se arrepende absolutamente de ter feito, nem no momento que fez e que ele uh, só não teve absolutamente, inclusive, nenhum tipo de problema após isso e as coisas caminharam maravilhosamente uh, bem depois. Um... So, two more questions. What are the post-quarantine plans? Um, you know what? We as Americans right now are sort of like we've kind of moved on from the COVID. I mean, we're still stuck in isolation, but the biggest problem right now is the police brutality issue that we're dealing with in America. And that's sort of taken over. I think we're uh, sort of giving that the respect that it needs right now. Uh, once we get through that, I think we're back to COVID. And once we're back to COVID, maybe we'll, I think we'll probably release uh, another single. <laughs> It, right. We made a video yesterday. We started creating a, a new video that uh, we'll share once things get to a sort of an acceptable time and place to uh, share music again and feel good about it. But right now, like I said, we, we sort of want the focus to be for us as learning white people and as for America as a changing, growing place. We want to uh, let that have some room to be able to uh, change as it, as it will. All right. Então, eu perguntei para ele quais são os planos pós-quarentena e ele disse que, e acho que ele foi bem enfático com isso, ele disse que a América, os Estados Unidos da América agora estão com um problema grave, seríssimo, que é da truculência policial, 
dos abusos uh, pelos quais os cidadãos estão passando. Então, esse é um assunto que todos os americanos estão focados agora para resolver uh, e todos os assuntos correlacionados a isso. Uh, uma vez que esse caminho e esse assunto uh, parecer hum. bem encaminhado, eles vão voltar uh, para a questão do Covid. É, e, 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 bem, ficar observando... Uh, para conseguir se adaptar e estruturar dentro do possível uh, o que der para fazer enquanto artistas. E uh, contaram que lançaram um vídeo ontem que eles vão uh, em breve postar e vão uh, compartilhar com a gente. Uh, after uh, the quarantine, are there any plans in mind uh, regarding Brazil? We would love to come to Brazil. It's a crazy thing. We, uh, on YouTube, were able to see uh, where the most viewers are from who've seen our video. And oh, really? for some reason, Brazil is really high up there. I don't know why, but it seems like we've made a connection to Brazil, which is so exciting to me. I love Brazil. It's like my favorite country. I love it there so much. And we, yeah, love, so we love good music. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Brazil is a very musical country. I've always found that. But like that would be a real goal to get to Brazil would be amazing. It's funny. We never, I mean, we truly did just start coming up with this band two months ago. We, we were like, this is what we're going to do while we're in quarantine. Uh, and we had zero. I mean, we were very lucky to, to put everything out. We didn't know how many people would like it. So the fact that, you know, people are asking us to come play and it's just so humbling and we we are so grateful for everybody who listens to us. And um, it's, yeah, it's very humbling to, to even get that question. I mean, we would love to come to Brazil and South America, um, Chile and uh, yeah, everywhere down there. So uh, yeah, we, we would love to come down. É, perguntei para eles se tem planos para vir para o Brasil e eles disseram que certamente Uh, eles dizem que tem um apreço uh, enorme pelo Brasil, pelos brasileiros, uh, para surpresa deles, não do ponto de vista do gosto musical, mas do ponto de vista numérico, uh, eles, eles perceberam que a maioria da audiência dele é de brasileiros, aí eu brinquei com ele dizendo que brasileiro realmente tem bom gosto musical, e ele falou assim, não tem a menor dúvida, o Brasil é um país extremamente musical, e a gente está muito feliz de saber que a gente tem esse alcance né, de a gente chegar lá no Brasil. E o Joey falou que é, é, esse projeto é um bebê, é novo, e ele está muito feliz e humildemente é, satisfeito de perceber como em tão pouco tempo é, teve tanta aderência. E acho que ele estava se referindo principalmente ao que a gente estava falando antes, que é dos brasileiros que estão acompanhando. Então ele está dizendo que ele está extremamente grato a isso e que ele está doido para vir para o Brasil. E que assim que isso tudo uh, permitir e essa porcaria toda acabar, que eles vão ter o maior prazer de vir para cá uh, fazer um, um showzaço aqui para a gente. Well, I think. There was how are you guys question. doing? How are you? What are you doing in COVID? Like, how are you handling it? And how we know you guys have, you know, about a half a million people who have the who have or had the virus i mean what are you what are you doing what do you guys think so we have in brazil we have two problems the president is one, one yeah yes which it seems to be that he's a little bit uh <laughs> more terrible than covid yeah uh, we know what that's so, like you know right yes yeah. you yours isn't <laughs> better <laughs> no uh So, I mean, Brazil is, is in chaos. Uh, uh, we have thousands and thousands of deaths. Hospitals are really full. And I think the worst scenario is that there is no plan. The plan is that the COVID is a, uh, it's just a simple flu. Uh, he's a, you know, I don't want to use words. We're live in the internet, but um, uh, you know what I mean? So uh, it's complicated because, um, Governors are having a lot of problem uh, because they need the help from the from from the president, and we're not getting that. So there's a lot of uh, nuisance and uh, stupid things being done. Uh, but 
uh, we're being very faithful to the quarantine. Uh, we believe that the, this procedure helped us a lot. Uh, we cannot even imagine uh, if we did not do the quarantine, uh, what would happen uh, here in Brazil. I think the numbers would be much, much, much worse than... So I think that Brazilians, they understood. I mean, artists in Brazil, uh, they did a lot of home concerts. Uh, the concerts had the hashtag stay at home or something like that. Mm -hmm. So many, many singers and bands, they entertained us uh, from their houses uh, so that uh, the quarantine could be um, a very strict thing. So, I mean, that's at least a good thing that we have. Uh, that's regarding... a good start. Yeah, yeah. So now it seems that we're going to reopen like everywhere, everywhere else in the world in phases. So I think that it seems that things are going to get very slowly back to normal. That's good. Maybe so. Maybe. That's good. Yeah. So, well, so I hope everything in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, gets sorted out. I think that our countries, they have much things in common. Uh, and I think there are people that like this, themselves and we are both leading, coping with very specific leaders. Uh, so I think that even though we're many, many miles away, we have to be together and face this uh, terrible situation together. And I think that we'll be, we'll be able to do that. And maybe through music and through art, we're going to be able to do that. So thank you very much for your time, for being with us tonight. Joaquin, uh, thank so you for having us. That was thank really you. fun to talk with you. So fun. Yes, and I hope I, I want to meet you guys one day in life, like in person. I'm sure we will. I think that'll happen. <laughs> All right. So stay, sa stay safe. And... Thanks, everybody, for watching, too. Yeah, so thanks, sweet. you guys, for listening. We love all of you. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Bye.